guys and welcome it is that SRB2 dude here today bringing you yet another video for today. Now today we are going to be doing an analysis of the Splatoon 2 uh, trailer in the recent Nintendo Switch presentation. I actually streamed it and uh, as you saw from the last video you saw my reaction of it. But anyways this, we're going to be doing an analysis of it. The video is about 1 minute and 30 seconds long and I'm going to try and pull out as many things as I possibly can out of it. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so the trailer starts off with, you know, you got Splatoon, you got the first map. Now, this map that we've uh, already seen, we saw this in the first Nintendo Switch trailer. A lot of people thought that this map was a remade uh, Urchin Underpass or so because they saw those trees and that ditch area. This part has quite a few resemblance of Urgent Underpass, but no, it's actually a new map that we have not seen before, and it's actually known as the Reef, as I found out in uh, Nintendo's Treehouse stream. Now, as you see, we've got all these squids coming up. As you see, you got the Splatter Shot, the Splat Roller, a Charger, and this new weapon class known as Dualies. Uh, I'm not even too sure if that the specific weapon that they show is just called Dualies, or I think it possibly will be a complete weapon class. Most likely this is going to be the case because I can definitely see uh, many different types of dual wield weapons in Splatoon. Uh, ranging in sizes, ranging in how, how far the dualies would shoot and stuff like that. And you know, and all these types of aspects of what a weapon can possibly have. I really want to mention the key things that we do find in this trailer. And one of them is this map known as Moray Towers. So, of course, you got Splatoon 2 and you have Splatoon 1. I mean, Splatoon 1 has Moray Towers. This is an example of previous maps and from the first game uh, coming back into the next game. And of course, maybe probably like revamped. As you see, uh, they actually have these inclines that you only saw in the story mode of Splatoon 1. And they've included it in Moray Towers to add a different way of playing, which is very interesting to me. And I can't wait to see what other maps they decide to bring in from the previous game. Now, here's an interesting thing that applies to chargers is that when you fully charge a shot, you are unable to swim in ink. And then once you pop out, you can instantly pop out a shot again. You aren't required to recharge a shot if you've already charged it. And honestly, some people may think this is a little bit OP, but honestly, in my opinion, I feel like this will take a lot of skill to actually master. Because a lot of people from Splatoon 1 probably already have the muscle memory of, okay, I can charge a shot, or, you know, I've charged up my shot. Oh, damn, I see somebody. I'm gonna go back in my ink and then retreat to somewhere else and recharge a sh another shot. Now they need to remember that when they do charge a shot without firing, they can instantly shoot somebody with a fully charged shot. Honestly, for veterans, this will take some time to get used to. Now, another thing I would like to talk about is this exclusive mechanic that can only work for dualies, which is the sidestepping. Now, one thing I've noticed is that people may think this may be a little bit powerful, but the thing that you have to take into consideration is that you can probably only sidestep twice, and once you have uh, stayed put into one position, you are stuck in that frame and you are shooting in that frame pretty much as a statue. You cannot move. Now, this is a new sub weapon I've noticed, which is somewhat similar to the Seekers from Splatoon 1. But instead with this, you can actually ricochet these off walls and such. From the Treehouse stream, I have noticed that they do not lock onto people and will decelerate in speeds as time goes on. Now, another interesting thing is for rollers. Now, you may have noticed this hammer attack that rollers have been doing. And the way they do it is that they have to be airborne, which means they need to jump to perform this attack. If you are generally rolling, you can just do the normal flick attack. But if you would like to do this hammer attack, you would need to jump and then flick. What I really like about this is that it's going to take a lot more skill to be using rollers these days. Because you won't have this massive hitbox that you can just swing at anybody to apply damage or just kill people in general. The way how super jumping in this game works is a lot different now, and I am generally a fan of this. Basically, what you need to do now is press the X button, and then you press the D-pad of which player that you would like to jump to. Why I like this so much is that this saves you actually trying to look down on the screen. All your focus can now be on one screen, and if, you, like, if you're basically sharking in a certain area, you can press the X button just to pop the map out, just see what's going on, see what's being inked, 
and then if nothing's, nothing's happening, you can just press X again and you can just carry on. Okay, so one interesting thing is that I would like to talk about the HUD of uh, Splatoon now. Now you can actually see what players have what, and, and especially on the enemy team as well. You can see what each inkling has in game. This also includes the enemy team's inklings. What I like about this is that it tells you which types of players are down or up. Instead of worrying if the charger is down or not, you can just look in the top of the screen and then you can just find out, okay, the charger is down, but I have to deal with the the, the roller, the octo shot, or the heavy splatling or something. And now the last thing that concerns multiplayer is the special weapons. Now, one thing I would like to mention about the specials is that they are all new. So basically, rip Kraken, rip Bubbler, rip Ink Strike, rip all of those specials that we had before. They said it themselves in the Nintendo uh, Treehouse stream that all the specials are new. Now, one of them is the Ink Rockets. You would want to be on a high place of some sort, and how this special weapon works is that you can lock on to your opponents, as many as you want. You can possibly lock on to four people at once. And once you're ready to fire, you can, just sh you can shoot four missiles for each opponent. In my opinion, this will work great if your enemy teams are grouped up together because in total you would have 16 rockets going to that one general direction. Another one is the bomb rush. I mean, they haven't given us too many details of this special, but this is basically bomb rush. It's not how uh, it used to be where you can just throw bombs everywhere. It's like you have this weapon now and now you can launch bombs further than before. This special is known as the Stingray and it allows you to shoot this huge laser beam uh, that can actually go through the entire map. It goes through walls and all that nonsense. And, and you'd think this weapon's probably OP. However, of course you have a limited time from it. And I've also heard that it can be very hard to control because of how slow it actually moves. We don't have too much information for this special, but it's basically a rain cloud. And honestly for this, uh, I can see this being really strong in turf war. As you can see, the Inklings are under the Rain Cloud that are yellow. They aren't actually taking damage from this. But if you want a special to take some map control or basically just, you know, annoy the enemy team a little bit uh, just by stunning them with some ink, then this will be a great pick for that situation. Now, this special is really cool and it allows you to fly in a jetpack. It also allows you to shoot ink bombs of death that will instantly kill people on impact. However, with this special, I can see this actually being weak to the weapon class known as Chargers, as you aren't the fastest target in the sky. And the last special that we've also been shown is the Splatdown attack. The gist of this special is that once it's been used, you will be launched up into the sky and you'll splat down causing an earthquake of ink around you. The other cool thing about this trick is that you can use it mid super jump. So once you are flying to your destined location, you can perform the splat down special to ensure your safety. And honestly, that's pretty much it for the multiplayer. Now there are a couple of single player things that I would like to mention. Uh, Octolings are back as you can see from here, from the, the very end of the trailer, you, can, you got some Octoling. And you also got this shot of Marie, yep. Everybody, this is Marie from, you know, Callie and Marie and all that nonsense. And you can see that she's standing in Octo Valley, considering the octopus-like rock in the background, if you noticed there. Now, this is the last thing that I'd like to mention, and it's this guy in the ice cream truck over here. You would notice from Splatoon 1 is that this shrimp uh, is actually the guy who sells you the shoes and all that type of stuff. But I feel like what this could be, it could be possibly something to do with gear slots and stuff. And now I'm only saying this because if you notice the three ice cream lollies on the billboard there, I feel like it could possibly give a hint of, of okay, you can change the slots of uh, these three pieces of the gear. I'm not really too sure. I mean, I'm just giving my assumption of it, but maybe you guys can give me a suggestion of what you think this might be in the comment section below. Anyways, I can't really grasp too much information for what may be in, uh, in Complice Plaza. I'm gonna guess that the two green arrows on the right side uh, might have something to do with local multiplayer maybe, and the shop next to it may have something to do with uh, clothes shopping probably. These are my assumptions of what I think that may be. There isn't too much information from these shots, so I can't really tell. But honestly, this is pretty much all I can really analyze from uh, this trailer. Uh, there's a lot of things to take in. There's a lot of things they added into this game that they didn't have in Splatoon 1. And I am, I am, I really cannot wait for this game to come out. Summer is going to be an amazing time for 2017. But anyways, yes, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch, both in the description below. Do it for both if you're feeling generous. And as always, guys, this has been that SRB2 dude, and I shall see you guys in a future video.